Welcome to Cisco Live. Las Vegas, and we are bringing to you the first ever basement series. Out of the basement. Woohoo! Out of the basement, here in Vegas, and now we're gonna talk about artificial intelligence and how that is gonna help us solve the main problems that we see in today's networks. At least we hope so, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. And we've got a great guest to come and talk about it. Uh, how about would you uh, introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do. Absolutely, so thank you guys for having me on the show. Yeah. My name is Richard Jang, I'm a product manager here at Cisco. Just previously I was a technical marketing engineer and also a software engineer at Cisco as well. Oh cool. And I primarily own the wireless assurance and automation portions of Cisco DNA Center, as well as Wi-Fi 6 and 6E platforms. Holy oh, cow. Wow, what do you do with all that extra free time? Oh man, I just like <laughs> hang out, you know? That's all I do. <laughs> no doubt, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, so we're here at Cisco Live. Uh, tell us about maybe some of the stuff that we're talking about introducing that you've been working on. So we have some incredible innovations that have been just introduced over the number of breakout sessions, technical seminars such as Wi-Fi 6E APs, and our entire right. AI-driven wireless solution stack that gives you end-to-end -end visibility at every single part of your network. Mm. Yeah, cool. Excellent. And uh, what we've already heard and seen a little bit of how your software is being used and, and deployed here. It's really impressive. Incredible. Absolutely. Really impressive. Because actually, uh, there are a lot of spots in a network where connection, connection can go wrong, right? We, we, have a, we have a good slide on that. Uh, so please talk us through this. Uh, where in a network can uh, connections fail, basically? Exactly, and before you get into that, you know, um, AI, right? It's a buzzword, mm -hmm. right? Sure. And 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 we know it's promising, but what like problems a, are we trying like, to like a buzzword? Like a buzz, like a like a like a buzzword, right? What problems are we <laughs> trying to solve? Yeah, we're trying to make sure that we can just know exactly what's going in your network, and we know that every single network is different on its own. It's yeah. different at different time of day, different yeah. days of week. With artificial intelligence, we're really trying to gain that personalized understanding of each individual environment so that we can see and troubleshoot it according to how your environment is. There's not one answer that fits all, so we use mm. AI to be able to figure it out and tailor it to your experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a pretty good representation of what uh, you just described, yeah. Exactly, we have so many different components when it comes to any sort of network. You have yeah. laptops, phones, you care about where your APs are deployed in terms of coverage, mm -hmm. you care about your wireless, you care about your wired, there are just so many different components, and if any portion of them have any sort of issue or failure or misconfiguration, it can create an anomaly somewhere else. Right. So the whole idea is we want to make sure that we have end-to-end -end visibility, and that's driven by AI. And we had we had Jim Florwick actually show us already the power of the dashboard and 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 how we can drill down and uh, right. find the source of a problem. And basically, uh, uh, Jason and I, we, we had a similar career path. Uh, we both started as an end user uh, running networks uh, mm -hmm. 20 years ago. <coughs> uh, yeah, whatever. And uh, you remember when, when a phone call came in into, into the help desk uh, and you had to go and find and try to replicate the problem and uh, it was a lot of work, a lot of work. And so basically from, from a problem to the, to the phone call to the resolution of the problem could be two weeks, three weeks, easily. Yeah, it's the reason I have gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but thanks to your software, um, minutes, right? Exactly. Short of the minutes. Love it gives you the answer right away, and that's the whole point. Recommendations, give you probable network causes. Really just handing you the answer. We never want you to stare at problems and figure it out. We want to present it to you the way it should be. And it keeps evolving, right? It keeps getting better with, with the more we use it, the more uh, data we gather, yeah. the more insights we get. Exactly, yeah. exactly. We're always constantly involving our machine learning models to learn the newest things that are in the network. The more data we have, the better it gets and the more accurate it gets. So Richard, we are uh, kind, of, kind of, we're in this hybrid work environment, yes. right? Uh, which which really means it's about choice. Because sometimes I'll be at home, sometimes I'll be in the office, but I don't think there will ever be a day where I will go into a cubicle mm. that says Jason Grant on the outside, <laughs> no. and and that's where I get my work done. Um, so the environment at work is changing. 
how does that impact uh, network design and, and how does AI kind of help in that environment? It's a great question. And the way I want to think of it is that, you know, it's been two years since we really started to come back into office. People mm -hmm. are finally starting to come back mm -hmm. from the comfort of their own homes, right? And then when it comes to your own homes, for the most part, your wireless, your network is working. You have uh -huh. like one wireless router in the center, maybe in your storage room, and you have like maybe 10, 15 devices max in your nice. house. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't really need to worry about anything. Everything works for the most part. Yep. Uh, the problem is now you're going back to office, right? You're expecting the same experience, mm -hmm. that seamless experience, just like you had at home. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in IT, we want to make sure that everyone who's coming back gets that same comfort so that we can and continue to encourage collaboration in the office. Yeah. Over the two years, there's been a lot of devices that have been, int been introduced. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that that's all secure. We know what's in the network as well mm -hmm. and provide and complete visibility into that. And those, those extra devices, because it's been significantly ramping up, uh, it's uh, uh, devices that use uh, video. Yes. Uh, we all are uh, totally uh, into using uh, video nowadays. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's better quality video, so, mm -hmm. so higher resolution equals also uh, higher data rates. Yes, yeah, lower uh, latency needs. Uh, uh, lower latency needs, yes. And then we have uh, uh, devices that are uh, controlled by non-humans, like, like IoT devices. Yes. Yeah. Drastic <laughs> uptake. So uh, there's a huge need for, uh, for, for, for solving the, uh, the issues with uh, primarily the Wi-Fi in that case. We, exactly. We need to see exactly what's in the network. And that's important, not only from just a connectivity perspective, but making sure that there's no data breaches, mm. we need to make sure we have AI right. to do classification. And that's what we are able to do exactly here today mm. with uh, AI endpoint analytics, for example, on Cisco DNA Center. So talk us through the uh, AI software stack. So there are main three pillars I want to talk about. Right. And the first one is going to be zero trust with device classification, mm -hmm. using AI to understand different attributes of the devices in your network so you can group them together so you know what's there. Mm. And that's important. Okay, so let me stop you there. Uh, because we've had endpoint uh, identification and classification for a really long time. So uh, does this mean that uh, do you have to have some sort of like service or subscription that we're, you are going to have to like constantly be uh, uh, told how to identify new devices and that's how we classify them or does it work differently now? So now basically our AI would just look into your network to see like, your packets and your different devices and IntelliJ just group them together and give you something like mm. a proposal saying, hey, I see that there are 20 devices in your network that has a name this. Mm. Do this. Do you, th you should maybe take a look at this and see if maybe you want to name it printers or you want to name it, you know, um, some Light sort switches of- switches exactly. or something, yeah. Okay. So we just give you some sort of proposal Oh, based interesting. on our analysis and you can make the decision on your own whether or not that makes sense. So is it is it working in close partnership with with ICE, our identica identification uh, services engine as well? It is, it is. Fantastic. Of course. So, so it actually uh, uh, significantly eases the implementation of uh, segmentation as well and it, applying policies. Yes, it does. Right. I didn't even know that. End Great. to end makes everything more secure and works together with all of our different service stacks. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, we have proven that Stephen can learn new things, <laughs> uh, which is awesome. <laughs> very, very cool. Uh, uh, very, very interesting. This is, would you classify this in uh, kind of like an arena of network management? Uh, and if so, like how, how has it evolved and what's kind of the future, or at least a directionality maybe of, of network management or, or do we even call it network management? Mm. I think, you know, network management is like a pretty broad term. It sure. really means everything. It can mean from configuration all the way to visibility. And yeah. in this piece, it's, you know, definitely a little bit of both in that sense, but more in the visibility piece, right? It's definitely yeah. in the realm of network management because you're seeing what's there in your network. Yeah. And, you know, when it comes to the, you know, we're talking about the future of networks, right? The whole idea is to be able to get end to end visibility, but not only that, right? Ideally, in the future, we're, our goal is to make everything proactive and automated. Mm. So we don't need to have any human interaction. We can just do automatic grouping of clients classification. Any tr or troubleshooting would be mm. automatic since we know what the problem is. As long as we have trust in the network, then we can solve it by itself using AI. This all sounds really futuristic. I mean, it sure does. Uh, how, how far are we on this? How much, how much is already like out there? Yeah, it, the, the data is there right now, right? Uh -huh. We have the ability to give you insights in on what to do right now. At this point, it's just implementing the trust to allow our network to do this thing for you. Wow. Right? Yeah. So, so the software is there. The intelligence is there. Uh, all we need to do is actually accept 
uh, that the intelligence is intelligent enough to use it and deploy it. There's still some time where we need to implement some more things, but for the most part, we are on the right path to get to where we need to be for the future of networking. So uh, network management is going to become a lot more uh, easier, uh, more intuitive, of course, and more secure. Yes. And I would say a better experience both for the user and for the network administrator. Yeah. Exceptional at every layer. So, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Magic! <laughs> yes. Magic. Uh, that's not my question, but that was a, <laughs> that's a pretty good segue. Uh, talking, about, um, you're talking about network engineers, uh, and for a long time, like the, the pinnacle of the network engineer is the CCIE, yes. right? Uh, it takes a lot of effort. There's a, typically a lot of years. People yes. don't just study for a test and then go get a CCIE. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of tests where you can kind of go cram for. You can't cram for a CCIE. No. And oftentimes, the kinds of things that we're trying to solve with AI, um, you would need a CCIE kind of level, exp not only um, education, but also experience. Uh, so, it gets me thinking, what's the future of the network engineer look like? Well, you're, you're still always going to want to have somebody who is physically there to mm -hmm. kind of talk to you, talk you through what you want there, right? The whole yeah. idea is to simplify the different tasks so they don't need to be there at every single location, every single place that, you know, is, you know, nitty gritty work. They don't need to do all that kind of stuff anymore. They can look at more higher level designs, right? They can focus on things that are not just, you know, busy work. Mm -hmm. AI is, is, is trying to be able to solve all those different problems at every layer. Sure. But, you know, you still want to have somebody there for you. And you still want to have someone that understands why the AI is making certain decisions. Um, okay. Of course. And you still want someone to help us, you know, give more inputs into the AI itself exactly. as well. So we're always going to need that expertise there to help us improve this. Love that. Does more. that mean then that in the future, a network engineer uh, would, would do maybe different things? Kind of like uh, in the previous episode where you brought up, uh, you know, when ATMs were first introduced, they're really worried about what was going to happen to bank tellers and will that make bank tellers obsolete mm -hmm. and uh, you know we've had ATMs for a long time now and clearly we have bank tellers so bank that tellers personal too. interaction is really important but also the role of the bank teller has yeah. evolved yeah so how, how would the role of the network engineer evolve as we start to introduce more and more AI so I want to think of it like this, right? Yeah. You would still want network admin, uh, administrators, IT administrators yeah. there to do design, where you deploy things, right? You still need people to know how to set it up physically, right? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to more troubleshooting, serviceability, that kind of stuff, we mm -hmm. want to be able to have AI take more and more part of that to make it so that the network engineer can really focus on design, mm -hmm. right? The right. part that's breaking, we right. want to have AI be able to really tackle that in a more efficient way. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, Richard, um, the basement series started uh, out of my basement at home. And yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, always the, uh, the finishing question is uh, about your home setup. But uh, in your situation, I want to know uh, what kind of AI do you have in your home? You know, just thinking about it now, I have a few. You can think of it, I have a house with like some security cameras uh -huh. that track movements on the side yards. You know, just like yeah. you know, Cisco's AI, it helps give you a peace of mind. So if there's a movement, something happens? You you get a notification on your phone, although oftentimes it's just a squirrel. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, you know, it's still, you get to get to see what's there. Yeah. Uh, you have a, you know, you know Apple HomePod that uh -huh. gives you, yeah. you, you use voice recognition. And the su suggestions on your Spotify playlist. Exactly. Uh -huh. That uh -huh. kind of stuff, right? Nest. Thermostat helps me to, you know, optimize my energy consumption when it comes to temperature. All this stuff. I'm realizing AI is really just everywhere. Yeah, and the, the, when you think about it, it is everywhere, and it really is. we're actually using it already every day. Very, very cool. Definitely. Thank you so much for agreeing to be a special guest on uh -huh. our podcast. Thank you so much for coming, and uh, please uh, pass on our gratitude to uh, your team and the people at Cisco that were all involved in all of this great AI innovation. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You are yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.